Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I would like to talk about uh, the right app for the right end users. My name is uh, Dr. Ignacio Ciampiti. I'm from Kansas State University, the crop production and cropping system specialist at the agronomy department. The idea of this presentation will be just to establish the basis of what are the best apps that we have available in the market at this point. Uh, we will also go through different topics and some kind of a classification. In the end, what we'll try to show is also some of the things that we are developing in the future about different apps. I call this presentation Right App for the Right End User. Um, when you take a look to why I decided to use this uh, title for the presentation, we are thinking in two main terms. We have the two R's, the Right App for the Right End User. First of all, I would like to kind of uh, go through some classification apps needs to be free, or at least that's one of the main points that always I'm trying to look for. Um, <clears throat> we'll go through the point in the future slides, but apps needs to be easy to use and intuitive. So, I mean, we are also wants to kind of have apps that they are easy to use, and we will download the app. We'll take a look to one, two, three minutes, and if we cannot figure it out in that time, we'll probably use a different app. Then apps, I mean, in this case, can be for smartphone or tablets. There are apps that they are only not only for identification, but also can provide some support to, and we'll go through some examples of those apps. And then lastly, we also have the idea of the concept here with the apps of personal preference. Personal preference means that we will see some different apps that they are, seems to be very, very similar. And the idea of how they classify or they are different is just based on basically personal preference. Uh, there are one app that probably you prefer because of the easy going or easy to use and the other app probably that is uh, less easy going. So there is a lot, I mean, a, a, a big concept of pref personal preference when we are deciding what is the app that we would like to use. And then another point about apps, apps are sometimes not connected to the websites. We have apps that we can just use in the field that we don't need any internet connection which is perfect because we have several spots in the field that we don't have any internet connection. But those apps are really hard to keep updated. I mean, basically, they, we need to every year fix um, things that we need to fix and then maintain relevancy of those apps probably is one of, the main, one of the main difficulties when we are facing in terms of the apps. One main point that I would like to emphasize also, I mean, I have my uh, Twitter and Facebook accounts, so it's at KSU Crops. Um, that account is an account that I use a lot in order to upload files and uh, prepare presentations for, for apps. Uh, in this year only, we were, I was providing more than 10 presentations on uh, agricultural apps. And at this moment, we, I have in my tablet and smartphone more than 100 different apps. <clears throat> that most of the times what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to download the apps. I'm taking a look to those. I'm playing. And I have kind of a rule saying if I'm not figured, uh, figure the app out in one, two minutes, and if it's too really hard to know where to go, what I'm trying to do most of the times is basically saying, okay, if I don't know how to use it, it's done, it's out. So an app needs to be very intuitive, as we mentioned before, easy to use, because most of the times when you are thinking about apps, we don't have any user guide. Then we will go through some of the apps that they require some kind of a subscription. So, I mean, basically, you need to subscribe to a website, you need to have an account, you need to log in. So, in those kind of apps is, are the ones that, for example, sometimes you need to have like a pay an annual fee that can be really expensive. But, I mean, those types of apps would provide some kind of a specific information about your field. So, there is always a situation, a trade off. I mean, in the idea of paying, for, I mean, gaining access to an app and what information is provided in that app. And we will go through that point in the next slides. <clears throat> we have different kind of an apps. We have some apps that I call, we, they are field guide or the pest management apps. Those are more really integrated. They are disease, insects, weeds, and more. And then the last point is just to emphasize, I mean, I mean just to do a little bit of bragging, it's like, yeah, but my, my Twitter account, we receive an award at the Agron America Society of Agronomy. And as I mentioned before, 
I use a Twitter account as an excellent source of information and I'm always posting information about apps. So I always appreciate people and comments about, okay, people saying, okay, I, I found this new app, uh, take a look to this one. So uh, if you have any new apps, if you want to exchange some information, please go ahead and feel free to do so. Going inside of the apps, I have like a different categories. I mean, identify almost five, six different categories. Uh, I have a first category that I call identification, is I call ID. And inside of there, I have weeds, insect diseases, and nutrient deficiencies. I have second category that I call application rates, and it's more specific for crop production management. And basically, I call the calc and the calculators up. And then a third category is called more the economic, it's the one that most of the times we would like to take a look at the end of the season, involves cost benefit, grain prices, inputs. Then category number four is a GPS base, or is what we also probably name as a sampling, taking notes, scouting. In that section, and we'll go through that section, are the section that we tend to see apps that we need some kind of an annual subscription or we need to have a login to our website. So that's a section that we probably need to uh, take a look to. Then we have some uh, field crop production guide. It's the one that I was saying, these are more the inter integrated ones and we'll go through there. We'll see that we have several topics including that category. And then the last one that I have is what I call the general knowledge. All the different type of information about agriculture and something else. So going straight forward to the first uh, classification is ID tools. So we go inside of the widths ID and here I'm showing kind of a print screen of my uh, tablet device and I have here more than 10 different apps in this section I'm just showing only nine. Uh, the big list that I have here were, are the ones that I will show you in just a few seconds. Uh, ID widths, uh, the first one here, this one is from the University of Missouri and then the other one that I will emphasize is also the WeAlert.com. These apps are very similar, so there might be some personal preference component to see which one is the one that you feel more comfortable with. So let's go to the first one and let's see an example. So we, when you get inside of the WeAlert.com, this is one of the apps that you can just go to the Google site and type WeAlert.com and you will get to this app, okay? And inside of the app, what you will find is the following. You can identify a weed by name, by appearance, and by region. By name, basically, if we know the common name or if we know the scientific name, you will have a section there that you can type the name and you can search. And you can also do it alphabetically. So you can search alphabetically and you can find the weed. Another one is by appearance. That probably involves a little bit more of a type of a question-answer approach you will be uh, uh, um, asked for several different type of questions and you will get to the identification of the weed. And then the last one is by region. So if we don't have a very good idea about the common name or scientific name, or if we don't have very good information about the appearance and how to classify the weed, by region is a very good option. So we go inside of the region and then inside there you will have several different components and examples of pictures of the, lead, of the weeds. Then we have some other topics like uh, calibration guides, first aid instructions, I mean, we have some kind of a tables of weight and measurements and how uh, compatibility testing. So let's go inside um, by name. So when you take a look to by name, basically what you will see, in this case, I'm just using the Bermuda grass. I mean, you have pictures, you have maybe probably more than one picture, you have some kind of a short description. When you go by appearance, that's kind of a, one of the points that always emphasize this situation, you need to have some expertise in order to do this. You need to have some idea of saying, I can recognize the weeds or I can have some knowledge, I mean, about the leaf type, stem type. So I think this section is more specific for people that really have very good and solid concept about weed and uh, weed science. And then we have the last section that is by region. As I mentioned before, I was selecting the North Central region and then here, uh, as you can see, in the pictures, I have a total of 12 different pictures. So I can just select one of the pictures to see if, if, the, if it's matching one of the problems that I'm seeing in the field. So it's a very nice, complete app that has different options on how to search. Another identification tool is a 
one that is called Wit Identifier. Wit Identifier is an app that is from Monsanto and it's an app that was prepared and developed in Canada. The question is, it has some applicability here in the US and I will say yes because some of the wits are more kind of universal. So this is a situation, an example that yes, we are seeing some applicability in the US. You can identify wits, you can make, you have a map of wit pressures and it's very complete in database. When you are, if you go online and if you try to download this app, you will get to see that basically the app, every time that we are trying to connect, is being updated. So it has a very good database about different type of widths. One of the main things that I like as compared with the previous app is that in this app, we have a section that we can just identify the widths by different pictures. We are just using different pictures. We are selecting what is a, a species type. So if it's a broad leaf or if it's a grass, so we can take a look to, to that picture. And then we have different options. And then from there, we are doing a classification. So if you see this next screen here, you will see that we can identify the, by the leaf, by the stem, uh, and by other traits, like maybe even flowers. I mean, if we are seeing a reproductive stage of the weed. So it's a little bit more friendly on how to identify the weed if we feel that we can do it. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think personally that it involves some kind of a knowledge of a weed scientist or maybe some kind of a uh, previous knowledge of some uh, of the weed that we are just uh, trying to identify. So I feel more, much more comfortable with uh, taking a look to pictures and trying to identify by pictures. So these are kind of examples of the weeds. We have some other type of uh, weeds app. We have Bayer that has a very good app very similar to the app that we are mentioning right now here. We have BASF that also has a very similar app. It's called BASF uh, Wits ID. So you will find maybe four, five, six, or even more apps. I'm just here providing what I consider to be the top three apps on the Wits side. Let's move forward to keep on the identification tools. And now we have the insects. So here I'm just providing, for example, Examples, I mean, coming from my tablet and coming from all the I mean, experience that we were collecting in the last almost two years on different apps on the insect side. So I have the Aphid Scout, the first one here, the one that has like kind of a magnifier. That one is of University of Nebraska. We have a pest book, uh, the one that is a red one, kind of a, with a color pillar. Uh, that's a DuPont app. And we have several other different apps. Here is a pest that is from Bayer Crop Science. It's called the Pest Expert. Um, and then here I have some other apps that they are more related to uh, rates, application, doses, uh, insecticides to use. Then also I'm trying to highlight on the on the kind of uh, this side of the slide. Uh, Iowa State University has a Scout Pro. And Scout Pro is, I mean, a service that you need to pay. Um, I'm always saying to everyone, if you are looking for an app, make sure that you have some recommendation. Make sure to check with someone else to see if someone is already using the app. What is the user experience about the app? If you feel comfortable with the app and if the app is working fine, that's right. That's okay. I will be, I will be more than willing to pay for that. But if you are paying for an app and the app is not really providing enough or sufficient information, there are some conflicts. So uh, I'm always saying I'm okay paying for an app, but I would like to have some recommendation before making the investment on, on that app. Um, we have some other different type of apps. The GRDC is a grain research and development center from Australia. and It's an insect ID. It's a very good app. The question is, is that relevant for the US? I will say most of the pictures are, I mean, insects are, I mean, universally distributed around the globe. So, I mean, it's still relevant for the U.S., has very good pictures. Auburn has a very nice guide for insects. So let's go inside of uh, these different in ID insects. Uh, so, I mean, here is one example. We have the Aphid Speed uh, Scout. Um, all the time that you want to try to download an, an app, you just have a couple of options. If you are a Mac user, you can go to the App Store and you can just type the name of the app. If you know exactly, like in this case, it's Affid Speed Scout. So you can type and sometimes uh, I, I found a little bit frustrated. I didn't get to the app. 
another approach is probably just to go to Google and just to type their Affid Speed Scout app. So you will get to the website and then in the, that website, sometimes you have much better look, an option to say, are you user Mac? So you go to the kind of a Apple's app store or are you an Android user? So you go to a different kind of a link. So try in that way and, and if you have any issues, just um, send me an email, I can help you out just to use those apps and download the apps. Also, if you are seeing some frustrations with apps, I mean, just we can exchange some kind of a contents and comments on the Twitter side. Here's one situation, uh, the Affid Scout, why I like this app. It has a very nice feature that is called in this visualize. So it's a very easy going app. And that's one of the things that you usually when you are using app, you need to try to understand. Here I have only four clicks, very easy. So I just took visualize and basically it will provide a visualization of different infestation levels. And I can take a look here and I can see, for example, that I have 50% infestation levels. So if I'm going to the field or if I'm sending my crop consultants or if uh, someone else is going for us and we are not there, we can say these are 50%. So if you are seeing this, that means that we probably are uh, about the threshold and we need to apply some insecticide. I think that this is a very good situation and app because you can also use for entry information, for history. So um, so I would recommend just to I mean to be more have a standard protocol and have this app in that use this app in that way. Another one, as I mentioned before, this is a, an app from Australia. It's called the GRDC Grain Research and Development Corporation. Okay, and what I like from this app is the pictures. It's very good. I mean, you can identify an insect, you can search for an insect, you can view different insect list. Uh, has very nice looking pictures. You go inside of the insects, you can take a look to the description, you can take a look to the crop damage. Um, it's still relevant even that it was developed by, by a specific another kind of institution in a different country, but it's, I think it's quite relevant for our, our country and our situations. Mentioned before, Iowa State University has a, a Scout Pro, corn and soybean. The last time that I checked it was a $30 cost. Um, I would probably invest the money if I have a very good recommendation. Make sure that you are talking with people and see if there is a good recommendation about the app. Another one very useful is the Pestbook. I mean, Pestbook is from DuPont. Um, also, it was developed for another conditions, but uh, what I like from this app is that we have two situations. One screen here is what we call the pest, and then we have a second screen here that we call beneficials. So why? Why is really important to know about the beneficials? So I think that it's extremely important to know about the beneficials since if we know what is the ratio between beneficials and pests, we will be able to do a much better control and decide if we need to use wood really insecticide or not based on also on the ratio between pests and beneficials. Most of the time, most of the apps that they are out there, they don't have this component. And I think that is it's extremely important not only just to identify the pests, but also to know which ones are the beneficials. I mean, and trying to promote those beneficials in our crops. So this is a very nice app providing pictures about those two things. You can also take a picture, you can compare. And another thing is that you can do that's very useful. You can save and send information to a crop consultant or to your agronomist or any kind of a specialist around your area. Inside of the ID, we have another section or category that we call the disease ID. On this section, we have different apps. I'm just here showing the pic uh, that I have from my all the apps that I have on the disease ID. BSF ID is very good. IPM toolkit is uh, more kind of uh, not only for diseases, but it's probably more integrated. Still, it's very strong on the disease side. Then we have the first one here is a soybean disease app from the South Dakota State University. Very good, very good app, and we will go inside there right now. Uh, and then we have some other ones from different countries, like here, the, the INRA, which is the Institute of National Research um, for France. And then we have some kind of uh, here, um, the crop disease that is from Australia. So, I mean, there are different options. I mean, I would say here, I will take a look to the disease, I mean, soybean disease and BSF and IPM toolkit. So going inside of the so South Dakota State University app is a very good because it's a very simple app. And that's one of the concepts that you will 
see around this presentation, I'm emphasizing also the easygoing concept, the idea of saying it's easy, it's very intuitive, so you can use it, you can just click in one situation and you will get to the app. And here is one example, we have a Soybean Disease app, we have a picture guide, for, I mean, it's for South Dakota, but this can be applied everywhere. We can diagnose these major soybean diseases, and it will provide some idea about what are the right management decisions. So if you take a look here, it's a, we have an example. We have a sudden death syndrome. Uh, it's, uh, it's caused by Fusarion. And we have there all the images, I mean, the disease. I mean, a picture of a very close leaf and a picture how the canopy is looking when the disease is affecting the uh, soybeans. And then another thing that I really like from the app is that we can have like kind of an, a calendar of a different disease and when the disease is affecting the crop. And why I think why I think that is very good is because if we have that calendar, basically we know when we are going out to scout the crop, what are the particular diseases that we can expect to find in the field. And I think that's very useful. I mean, it's very unique and I did not see that in, in different apps. So I, I just give a heads up. I mean, I think that it's a very good app in, on, on summarizing that very nice chart of information. As I mentioned before, the IPM Toolkit, that's an app that is from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This, this is a very nice integrated app. I, I, I appreciate the work that was going behind this app in the idea of saying we have news and Twitter. Most of the extension, especially is Twitter, is there. So basically, if you are looking for what is a current what's going on in the field today, you can just go there inside of the Twitters and you can take a look to the feed of the extension specialists and what's going on today uh, in the field. Then we have some news and publications. So every time that we have a new meeting coming in next week, all the meetings are, they appear there. So I mean, farmers, crop consultants, um, CCA people will just go inside of the app and we'll have a very good looking idea of saying what are the next coming meetings. Another point is also about YouTube videos. Most of the times, I mean, I really appreciate when people is using the YouTube just to show production problems. Here you will have several YouTube videos. They are all in the same, in the very same app. Um, and basically showing all different production issues. Uh, one of the things that limitations that we can probably post in the app is basically the app needs some internet connection. So YouTube, I mean, the YouTube videos are linked in the web. So that means that the app, if we don't have any very good internet connection, the app will be looking for the internet connection. So we will not be able to play the YouTube videos. So I mean, and the app is always looking for internet connection because uh, it's the only way that the app needs to, can be updated. And also we have very nice looking database of pictures. I mean, we have very look, I mean, different type of pictures. I mean, you can go and scroll there. So, so I consider this app in summary, like an app that basically just have very good extension information, updated, easy to find, searchable. So when people are saying, I cannot find that content, I think this is a very good example of how extension can evolve and show all the different content in an easy way to find, I mean, to be found. In the last point of the identification tools is about nutrient deficiencies. Um, I call the Nutrients ID, and I have very different examples here. We have so many different apps um, that they have different pictures on how we can get to identify different deficiencies. Uh, here, uh, the plant images, that's a very good app. We have some ag PhD deficiencies, uh, fluid fertilizer. So we'll go through some of the different apps. Here is one example. I have two examples. One is very specific for winter cereal nutrition. So we have wheat, barley, oats. So we have several different kind of a winter cereal uh, crops, um, and triticale and rye. And basically, it's very specific for those crops. Again, this app was developed for Australia, but when you are talking about nutrient deficiencies are very universal. So most of the pictures that we usually use are coming from different parts around the world, uh, around the, glo the globe. And basically, I mean, deficiencies are deficiencies. So it's very good app. The issue with that app is that it's just specific for winter cereal. 
So if you really want to have only one app for all the crops, I would probably need to recommend the IPNI, which is the International Plant Nutrition Institute Library. It's a very good app. Uh, it's the one that I'm showing here at the bottom of the slide. And you have pictures about different crops and you have like a different nutrients. And inside of each nutrient, you have all the different pictures uh, and you have a description. It's a very good app, very well developed, has very nice pictures, clear identification of nutrient deficiency. I highly recommend this app. Uh, it's only, and that's one of the app that is $5 cost, but it's very worth it. I mean, that's the case. I mean, I can provide a recommendation to say, uh, if I need to pick one up and then pay for that app, I think that this is an app that is very complete and you have all the pictures inside that app. Another one is, for example, the IPHD has a very nice also a nutrient pictures for 35 different crops and four nutrients. So it's a very, very complete app. Uh, so if you want to really just to start to take a look to one good app in showing pictures and nutrient deficiencies, the IPHD probably is a good option. Uh, it's called a crop nutrient deficiencies, I mean, app. And then inside there you have different crops, all the different combinations, so you have different nutrients. And for each crop you have like at least several pictures. So it's a very easy going. Um, we have some information about deficiency. We have information also about, I mean, it provides some help, which is always good to have in an app, uh, easy to navigate. Um, and I think it's, it's, uh, it's a very complete app in terms of a database, how many pictures and, and crops is, is inside of that app. So as you are seeing to summarize all the ID apps, uh, these are just identification and there are no recommendations of what are the application rates. So now we go to the application rates or how to calculate rates and we have what I call the calculators and here I'm putting like a different examples. We have several examples of calculators. Um, I will go through some of those examples. Uh, I cannot go through all because of the time. Here is one example. This is a crop nutrient removal. Um, and I would recommend to use this kind of an app if you want to learn a little bit more about what is a, how much nutrients are we removing when we are, for example, harvesting 200 bushels of corn or when we are harvesting different kind of amount of corn or, or, or crops. So we have different information, different nutrients, and we have rem removal rate in the grain, in the store, and then we have a total removal. So it's a very nice app. You can select your crop. You can just target what is the yield goal and you have come removal by fraction. Remember, most of the times we are looking at removal, we are looking how much are we removing in the grain, which is the first column. So the total will provide some idea of how much the plant needs. But when we are looking about nutrient removal, we are looking at the first column. And also another very nice feature is that you can save the results and you can email to your crop consultant. Another one is the DuPont uh, Crop Protection app. And basically it's what we call it the mix tank. And we have different options there. We have just a calculation of the product tank. We can calculate by area. We can calculate the ratio between water and the area or volume to volume. Uh, it's, a very, it's very useful, has, as I mentioned before, different features, has a very good information. Um, there are several apps that they really calculate rates, I um, mean, how to calculate the rates and how to calculate the tank and the spray to volume. So I think I consider this to be one of the best in, in that area. Another example is what we call the tank mix calculator. And the tank mix calculator is, for example, a very similar app. Uh, the idea of this app is basically showing exactly the same. We have a job and, and basically we have a chemical list and, and we can identify there all the different type of uh, calculations that we have in that, in that app. So, so we have a kind of a final screen with an input summary information, how much of the area we need to spray, how many gallons, uh, what is the gallons per acre. So that's very similar to the tank mix, um, to the mix tank that we mentioned before, DuPont. So here we have an example when we go inside, we have all different chemicals and then we can just to say how much of the area we need to spray, what is the tank size and the spray volume and the chemical rate. Another one is the t -Jet. it's a very good one, it's a spray select app and here for example you have, for example, you, we, will have, we can have different selections, we can select what will be the speed, 
how many inches are separating the, the nozzles, and also what we did with the GPA. And so basically on that selection, we can say if you are using fertilizer or not, and then we can also select what is the specific gravity of the fertilizer. And based on that, it will be uh, provide a recommendation of what is the specific kind of a nozzles that we need to use for that application. So nozzle selection, we have a type of different nozzles. I mean, so it's a knowing the P PSI. So here is another example. We have a measurement and it provides some kind of a very nice, unique uh, way to save the information. And you can just almost save the information and email to someone. Another app is uh, after finishing all the uh, calculators is what we, I call the crop production apps. And the crop production apps are basically apps that they will be related to crop productivity, uh, seeding rate calculations, plant populations, uh, yield estimations. So here I have a couple of examples. I mean, uh, Pioneer, uh, Plantability. We have extreme beans that uh, they are soybean up. We have another Pioneer, I mean, in inoculation, um, an estimator of yields. We have a harvest loss, very, very nice Ag PhD app. You just put the crop, you just almost put how many quantify an area and you have a harvest loss and we'll calculate how much yield are you losing. So it's an excellent app to have a much better idea of really losses, I mean, in harvest. And just to put a number to that. We have here the growing degree apps and that's an excellent app just to know exactly, I mean, when is the right time that you will be approaching flowering corn and then from there you can decide what a practice are you planning to do in that situation. And then another one here, for example, from the University of Arkansas is the Corn Advisor. So we'll go through some of the apps on the crop production section. Maximizing yields in soybeans, we have this app that is called Extreme Means. Uh, was prepared by the University of Minnesota. Uh, it's a seed rate calculator. I mean, was in collaboration with several people in the, in the US. It's a very big project. And the idea was trying to kind of provide some unique information from very different research studies performed in the last five, five years on how to increase yields and also trying to get some calculations about, for example, seeding rates on soybean. Another app very specific for, for, for Pioneer is what we call the Plantability app. It has very unique information. It has a section that you can scan. The, I mean, using the barcode, you can scan the bag and basically you can just type and introduce information that is specific for your field. So on the soybean yield, just going a little bit inside of that app, we can see, I mean, as mentioned before, we can calculate a seeding rate and we can also calculate like a break-even cost. So it's a very easy going app. We have just a few, four kind of a clicks and we have some information about the research. And so here is one screen that I'm showing some of the information about seed inoculant, are inoculation important or not. Then the Pioneer, for example, here, the pioneer population in this case, uh, just showing, for example, what are the different plant population of seed drop and what are the, in this situation, what are the different yields. So you can decide based on your yield goal, yield target, what will be the seed drop and the population, and how much uh, benefit you will, you will get from there. So, so here is also another graph showing the kind of a economic planting rate, not only just the optimum agronomic, but also just introducing some kind of a idea of net income by acre. Another one is the corn and rate calculator. The corn and rate calculator is an, is an app from University of Wisconsin extension, I mean, and the year is also very similar, very simple. You have the cost of the fertilizer, how much nitrogen you have in the fertilizer, and only what is the price of the corn. And with all that, you will be calculated, I mean, I mean, just answering two different type of questions. What is the potential of the soil to provide nitrogen um, or, or, or um, increase yields and then also I mean trying to get some idea of information about who, what was the previous crop just to see if we can provide or not some kind of a end credits if it was coming from soybeans. So it's very simple we have very nice information about the fertilizers and then just introducing different uh, the cost of the fertilizer per ton how much is if we are using for example anhydrous ammonia and then how much is the price of corn at the moment was very high, so corn is very low right now, but I mean, here is just introducing and taking a look to the points, it's calculating how much would be the uh, one economic rate, I mean, using in this case I was coming from soybeans and adding some credit to the soybeans, 
is recommending 100 pounds per acre. So it's very unique, very simple to use. But also associated to this app is the, calcu the price calculator. I mean, it's not only just to know if we need to apply it and what rate, but it's also to know, I mean, what is a fertilizer type? What is a, f a less expensive per unit of nitrogen fertilizer type? And we have uh, here some examples. I mean, it's also an another easy going app to use. You can introduce the fertilizer cost, uh, the nitrogen content inside of the fertilizer, and we'll calculate here, comparing side by side, and hydrous ammonia uh, here, 37 uh, cents per pound of nitrogen versus urea, that is only 65, so it's almost double. So, so with that, you get some feeling idea of what is the best source that you need to use, which also depends on the timing that you are applying this. University of Wisconsin is also having a very good app on, on estimating yields. Very good app, very nice information. So it's a very simple estimation. It's whatever we are always recommending to do in the field. Just going out and measuring 17.5 uh, foot, which is a thousand uh, of an acre. So we can say how many years we have, how many plants. Then we are just taking a couple of subsample, a couple of years, and just saying I have this many number of rows per year, this many number of kernels per row. And one of the points that we don't have much information is the last concept that is called kernel mass. And the kernel mass is basically a concept that is related to the kernel weight. And the idea is just, is just saying what is the individual grain of the weight. So it's like kind of a, a small one grain, what is the weight of that small one, one grain. And that's the concept of uh, 280 milligrams, that example. So in this situation, I mean, that kind of a term can go from 150 to 300. So, I mean, if we are want to be a conservative, we probably can use 200 or 220. Also has a very nice moisture estimation. So we can estimate moisture and we can predict the corn yields. And also has another section that is for kind of a maturity predictor. So if we know what is the tassel date and expected frost date, uh, we have a screen there. Uh, basically saying if it's green, we are on the safe side. If it's red, we, that means that we have some probably um, a likelihood to receive some frost before the corn is getting to black layer. Then on the population calculator, I mean, we have RPHD, I mean, also, I mean, did some kind of a very nice uh, soybean corn and stand population. So we can just say what is the seed per acre, what is the road width, and then we'll calculate how many plants we should have per foot. So. This, this is very useful when we are going to the field and trying to make those counts and estimations. I mean, trying to decide how many plants if we were at really achieving our final targeted, I mean, uh, seeding rate. There are some other apps, I mean, that they are more based on irrigation. So I mean, Nebraska was just coming with this, I mean, last two apps, I mean, basically saying what is the energy type and the cost of the, the, the kilowatt per hour and how much water are we applying and basically idea is to provide to farmers some more idea of saying how they can use and irrigate more efficient and save more or uh, more money in immune wise in irrigation systems now we will move to uh, one of the last sections i mean I'm trying to talk about a little bit more price and economic so it's what i call the news and finance it's economic and market costs and benefits so we have a couple there here is a section that I call a lot of personal preference. We have a DTN, the farmer, the progressive farmer, a web. We have cash grain prices. Uh, we have very different kind of apps. We have a University of Kansas that we have a kind of a budgets. So I will go inside of some of these apps. Uh, let's go with this one, University of Arkansas. So cost benefits. So you will see basically here inside of the app all the different type of inputs, outputs, and variable cost. So basically, we can do inside of the app uh, just a spreadsheet saying, okay, what is the crop type? What is my expected yield? And then just to put all the costs that I have for producing that crop. And I can calculate from there basically what will be my kind of a benefit, I mean, from that information. Another one that I like is the one that I call here from our web is a cash uh, grain bits. Basically, if you're if you are located in one specific place, it will it will let you know exactly what are the prices that someone is paying around your area. So here is for corn, um, and here I have some information for sorghum. So I can get to see what are the prices of the different elevators and trying to see which one is the most convenient 
based on distance and based on price that they are paying uh, per unit of bushel. So it's a very nice app. It's called Cash Gra Grain Bits. Um, very nice app. It needs some internet connection because, I mean, basically it's connected to the web. Then we have also the CBA app. I mean, it's an, and it's an app very similar to the DTN of the app web. And this app will provide some kind of a price of corn and soybeans, uh, the future options. Uh, it has news, uh, weather, markets, and they're very complete. It's very similar to all the different apps that we have here. I'm showing another example of DTM, Progressive Farmer. Uh, it's a very nice looking app. We have information, we have price of the grains, we have the weather, we have the news. They are very similar. Our web is very, very similar. So here is what I, I kind of uh, emphasize that is a personal preference option. Then one of the last ones is what we call the GPS, so scouting. So we have a couple of options here. I mean, scouting, basically, most of these apps, they need some internet connection. They need to have some kind of a connectivity in order to access and have, I mean, uh, have the idea of, I mean, really getting that information. Um, I will give you some example. We have the Connected Farm, the eScout. Um, most of them are just to uh, put some things in the field and just to mark areas and trying to georeference points. Then we have the Argis. This app is uh, S3 is basically just to mark an area in the field and create like an area so we can kind of uh, know what is the area of that specific section of the field and we can calculate distances. Uh, soil web, basically this will work in a way that we are just standing in this point and if we click there, it will let us know what is the soil type. And then we have the scout probe, corn and soybean zone. Here we have the connected farm, scout. I mean, this one is the one that I mentioned before. It's a very good app for scouting purposes. We can mark an area on the field. We can flag the area. We can georeference. We can go back and take more samples from that area. It's a very good app. I mean, it's very, very easy going. We can take notes. We can take pictures for one specific location. So let's say that you are sending someone to do soil sampling and you want to just georeference that. You can do the app to do that. But you can also take a picture of one specific point, so you can just add to the point a picture. So anyone else that is coming in next year can just easily identify all that. And here is basically, as I mentioned before, make a boundary, make a map, take a uh, photo. Um, even, I mean, even, most of the times, as I mentioned before on these apps, as you can see here at the end, you have a sign out. So you need to have an account, a subscription. Some of the, those are free, some of those you need to pay. Uh, but they are very useful, providing very good information. This one is the one that I mentioned before. It's a GPS base. It's called the Argis or the S3. You have the map for the US. You can calculate areas. You can search for a specific area in your field. Uh, you can make some kind of a measure distance. In this example, for example, I can measure like a triangle. And if I don't like the map of the layout, I can change the layout. I can make another triangle or make a different distances. I can measure an area. And then it has very nice features and connectivity. This is a free app. It's very useful, very easy going when you are trying to make estimations about your field. Some of the last apps that I would like to emphasize on this presentation is about the more, the, the one that I call the more integrated apps, uh, field guides. Some of these apps, basically, they have all the information that we were talking in the last presentations, basically, weeds, insects, uh, diseases, uh, corn estimation, soybean estimation. They are very integrated and you can find everything in one app. Here I have, I'm providing like a kind of a print screen from my tablet. I'm, I have at the moment more than um, nine different apps on this section. Um, we have a field guide, Ag PhD, the, here the corn and soybean Purdue extension guide. Uh, we have a couple ones for Bayer, uh, University of Arkansas for or cash crops. We have here for uh, pest management uh, guide, so uh, soybean field guide for Louisiana State University. So we have different apps. The field crop production guide, the one from uh, Purdue, is very useful. It's only just for iPad devices at the moment. This one app that um, is, is not free, I think that the final cost is around $14. Last time that I checked, uh, is the one that I probably will pay for that. Uh, it's very unique, has insect disease, weeds, 
as a way to estimate corn yields, as a way to estimate soybean yields, as information about corn and soybean management. It's very complete, and if you want just to have one app, and if you don't want to really have so much information about apps, this might be one that I would probably try. Then we have some other ones, I mean, for forages, there is not really so much information on forages, but this uh, guide to forage is an app that it will help to identify different forages plants. It will separate that information into grasses and legumes. So, I mean, it would be good for you to kind of have that idea. And then we have the IPHD, the field guide, which is very good in the sense that we have two components into one. We have the weeds and the insects on the same app. Uh, I think that this is probably one of the best way to go rather than just to have individual apps for each um, kind of a sector so I mean pests I mean it's much better to have kind of an integrated app at PHE again easy going uh, weeds and insects in one app very good some of the last apps uh, the last classification that I call the general knowledge agriculture here is what I include apps uh, they are very useful that I use most frequently like a crops and sold a magazine from the American Society of Agronomy, uh, uh, the commodity classic or some information about, for example, uh, soybeans on the commodity groups and, uh, in the state. And then I have some kind of uh, weather information in telecast or the weather channel or the Gunder map. Then I have some Google Earth. Um, if you want to know more about agriculture, you have an agriculture glossary. And then I would like to introduce this machinery sizing. I mean, it's, a, it's an app from K-State. And basically, I mean, it's a way to quickly estimate kind of a tractor horsepower, I mean, how to pull various, various different implements. So, I mean, it's just for Androids at the moment. Um, basically, you have different options about if the soil is steel, if, what is the different soil type, what is your tractor type, uh, and then what is equipment that you're applying to use. So this will provide you some idea of information uh, to decide what kind of equipment do you need and do you need to buy? So that was kind of the, the idea of behind the app is trying to uh, for the people to provide this information as a kind of a support tool to, to make decisions when you're trying to buy equipment. And then as I mentioned before, crop and source is magazine. So every time that I mean the magazine is online and I receive a note in my tablet so I can go and just read. So if you want to look for some kind of a summary of different apps, here is kind of my big list of the different apps. I have a Weed ID from Missouri. I have GRDC from Insects. And um, I have a DC South Dakota State University, IPNI for nutrient deficiency. I have nutrient calculators, just how much nutrient is being removed, crop production apps. Uh, I have commodity prices, the cash, uh, grain bits, knowing what is the price around your area. Uh, and some scouting field crop guides, the Purdue and the e crop scout. The e crop scout is very good because you can take very good notes. Again, you need some kind of a login or subscription, which sometimes, I mean, people would like to do it. People, is, I mean, sometimes you want to just go ahead and use the app. So some of the things that we are working right now is trying to estimate sorghum app. So we're working in that sorghum app at the moment. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is that for farmers, it's really hard to estimate a great number in sorghum. We have 2,000, 4,000 grains per head. The way, best way to understand this is trying to see if we can have a correlation between the size of the head and the grain number. And basically that's the idea approach that we are trying to take most of the times. We have very kind of a nice correlation between volume of the head and grain number. And we are working with an app to trying to take pictures and see if we can do estimations. Very similar in wheat. Uh, again, very similar. If we can calculate taking a picture the head size and what is the grain number. And the idea is most of the times we get to see a high correlation between grain number and grain yield. And it's one of the main factors correlated. So, so the grain number estimation using the height volume through a picture is probably one of the most feasible ways really to get information about what is a yield estimation before harvest. And we can go even two or three weeks after flowering and we can get a very good estimation of this. We have a corn apps and also it's very simple as we talk in sorghum and, and wheat. So we are doing the same process. I mean, trying to get an estimation of the, of the ear size, ear volume. So here we have a picture with the volume. We are taking pictures and basically we are calculating the size. So in summary for all these presentations, right app for the right end user. So the identifications are very use, useful apps for diagnosing crop production issues, but they don't provide 
recommendation rates. They just provide identification tools. So that's the main thing that we need to know. If you really are looking for product rates and recommendations, just identify the problem and trying to contact your agronomist or specialist in your area. The calculators are very useful for making the recommendations or for taking decisions on production practices. We can just know what is the product or we can just have some idea what is the efficiency. But if we really want to know, have some information about how much I should apply in terms of a fertilizer or nutrients, I can take a look to the removal and check with my agronomist to see if that number makes sense. Economic and finance are very good for reviewing prices. I mean, I think, and they are easy. I mean, they are easy going in terms of really assisting in, ta in taking economic decisions. And then I consider the field guides as a. If I need to pick one up, I would probably try to go and use a field guide because it's very complete. I mean, I have all information I mean, potential issues and production issues in one specific app. So that's basically. I mean, the general agriculture is. I mean, about the educational tools. And, and then also about some other things, but this is kind of a very kind of a brief summary of all the different apps that we have in agriculture. Uh, we have several more. What I always appreciate is um, if we can have more interaction with farmers and getting to know each other and getting to know which one are the apps that you are using in your field. So if you have any questions about apps, if you have any way that we can exchange communication and information about apps, just send me an email. Uh, I am here providing my email and phone number, so send me an email. Uh, we can exchange information also. If you follow us in, uh, in Twitter and on Facebook, if you are very active, just follow those websites. I mean, you will see that every week we have some kind of a big list of different apps that I'm trying. And we have very useful information about also crop production um, around around the state, around the country. So um, that's all that I have for today. So I hope that you can enjoy the presentation. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks.